Here's Jean Shalit with one of Hollywood's great ladies. She was born in Independence, Missouri, 1911, as Virginia Catherine McMath, but she grew up to become Ginger Rogers. She introduced the Gershwin's Embraceable You in the 1930 musical Girl Crazy. She made 10 movies with Fred Astaire, and the year after that partnership ended, 1940, she won an Academy Award for Best Actress for the film Kitty Foyle. In all, she made 73 movies, and when Hollywood ran out of vehicles, she returned to the stage in hit shows like Hello, Dolly! and Mame. And although her movie career is decades behind her, Ginger Rogers still retains that indefinable aura. She is a movie star. Carson Kanan once described Ginger Rogers as a genuine, high-class, A1, 24-carat movie star. Do oh, you know he did that? No, I didn't. I think that is marvelous. I you, didn't know that. You used to wake up in the morning and say, I am a movie star? No, I never did that. You never had the no. conscious feeling of, no, I of never your position? Did that. No, I never did that. No. Uh-uh. Is it true you never had a dancing lesson, a formal dancing That's right. lesson? That's right. I, it, when you've heard of people sitting down at the piano, play the piano, they don't know one note from another, well, that's my story. I was sort of like topsy. I just grew when, come when it comes to dancing. Did you have acting lessons ever? No. You just acted? I just acted. What made you think? Didn't you have could... breathing lessons either. <laughs> <laughs> of the 73 movies you made, do you have a favorite? I have favorite things in films, I think. Um, Tell us a few. All right, okay. Uh, the Major and the Minor, I think that was Billy Wilder's very first directorial job in films here in America. And then I, I very much like um, the picture I made with Fred called Barclays of Broadway. Fred Astaire. And uh, th also with Fred, the one called uh, Swing Time, George Stevens directed. Wonderful director. And he gave us a certain quality in that film, I think, that made it stand out above the others. Then I like Kitty Foyle because it was my, it was something that I knew. I knew when I read the script, Jean, I knew the minute, when I, the minute I read that script that whoever played this role was, would get a nomination, maybe not an Academy, but a nomination for an Academy. Am I? You're that little girl on the sleigh ride. The trouble is you're no longer a little girl. You're a grown woman now. I'm only 24. You're 26. Don't try to kid me. Well, I'm not old anyway. No. And maybe you aren't very smart either. I know what I'm doing. Well, you won the Oscar in 1940 for Kitty Farr. That's right. And you I remember was that very night? Fortunate. Oh, oh, do I remember that night? Tell me. I thanked my mother. I <laughs> thanked everybody. Did you really? Oh, oh, yes. Scared absolutely to death. I didn't expect to do it. I didn't expect to receive the Academy. You didn't? No, the, 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 the field of those darling people who were running with me was so impressive that I didn't feel that I had a chance. There was Katherine Hepburn in uh, Philadelphia Story and Martha Scott in Our Town and Joan Fontaine in Rebecca and uh, Betty Davis in The Letter and Ginger in Kitty Foyle. What a year! So it really, I, in looking at that field, I thought, well, this this horse is not going to win in this race because of this marvelous field of racing horses. In the heyday of Hollywood in the 30s and 40s when all the great fashion designers made gowns for yeah. stars, yeah. did you get to keep any of those clothes? You know, Gene, it's the funniest thing. Everybody thinks, everybody I talk to thinks that all the actresses and actors got to keep their costumes no matter what they were. And they said, well, what about the, you know, the gold dress that you wore in uh, the Barclays of Broadway? Where do you keep it? Well, I don't own any, never did own any of them. They all belong to the various studios 
which uh, where I made the films. As a matter of fact, I made a film at 20th Century Fox, and Marilyn Monroe came over while I was doing the film, and she saw my gold lame dress, and she went to the designer and she said, I want that dress. I want that dress. <laughs> and so she got it, and they made the dress to fit her. There's a very famous dress that you wore in a Fred Astaire picture that was all feathers. That's right. Do you know what? People think they see it in black and white, and everyone thinks they know what color that, that, film, that uh, dress was. And do, do you remember the, yes, the dress I, well? Yes, I assumed it was a black and white dress. <laughs> oh, come on. No. What color everyone was that dress? Everyone thinks it's pink or red. Lots of people think it's, it was a red dress. Well, they love to think it's a red dress. It wasn't. It was ice blue, very pretty, with ice blue uh, satin, as well as feathers. Fred Astaire has always given you the credit for the success of those dance numbers, because he said the panache, the style you brought to those, would have been missing with any other dance. Well, that's very gracious of him and very generous of him to say that. We both uh, are perfectionists and he loves everything to be precise and so do I. And so we were always aiming for that one long take in one piece of film so that the whole dance would go in front of your face without a, a cut. We'd like to note that the dress Ginger Rogers was wearing in a scene from Top Hat has been donated to the Smithsonian by RKO Pictures. We'll be back in a moment with Dr. Euline after these messages.